Today, we're going to cancel uh, book burners. Now, th this should be a cancellation that I'm doing in 1930s Germany, not modern America. But as always, those who allegedly hate fascism have a funny habit of copying its methods. Uh, and it's happening yet again. So here's the Newsweek report. It says, a new TikTok trend has, has uh, emerged this week as former Harry Potter fans protest author J.K. Rowling's widely criticized views on trans people by burning copies of her books. Uh, one video posted by a TikTok view, uh, user shows a, a number of Harry Potter books being placed on a burning pyre. Um, you have to stop using death of the author as an excuse to have your cake and eat it too. The voiceover says, while the reader's perspective is an important part of interpretation and meaning, it is impossible to completely divorce a work from its creator. The voiceover continues, the positive impact that J.K. Rowling's work had on millions of readers does not negate how ha her hateful lobbying has affected the trans community. This doesn't even touch on the harmful fat phobia. Oh, she's fat phobic now, too. I hadn't heard about that. Uh, racism and valorization of supremacists and child abusers in her most famous work. The video ends with a message. Your love of Harry Potter is not more important than the lives of trans women. Well, there's a false dichotomy if I've ever heard one in my life. You have to choose between those two things. Either Harry Potter or, quote unquote, trans women. You, can't, it's the, you have to choose between them. Now, um, and you can see in the video here, one of the uh, book burnings happening. Um, now, why are people mad at J.K. Rowling? Well, this goes back, of course, to the controversy that Rowling stirred up months ago when she first came out as a believer in biology. This is a very stressful and dangerous thing for any celebrity or anyone who runs in left-wing circles. To be exposed as a biology believer can have serious consequences in their lives. For it to be found out that you believe that men have penises... Um, this is the kind of thing that can ruin your life. J.K. Rowling, that's, she's discovered that. Ever since she admitted publicly that men had penises, many of her previous fans have had this vendetta against her. Now, this was ramped up this week when it was reported by Pink News, which is one of the most atrocious and dishonest left-wing rags in, in existence, and there's a lot of competition for that title. Uh, it was reported that J.K. Rowling has written a transphobic novel about a man who dresses as a woman to kill his victims. And their tweet about it, which you can see right here, has 35,000 retweets with thousands of people reacting in horror based on a headline about a book that they haven't read. And the irony is that many of these people who are, who are freaking out about this book they haven't read, these are the same ones who said that you can't judge the Netflix movie Cuties without watching it. Now, of course, you could try to argue that, that the knife cuts the other way, too. And I said you can judge Cuties without watching it. But here I'm saying you can't, you can't judge the book without reading it. Doesn't that make me a hypocrite? No, it doesn't. And I'll tell you why. Here's the difference. Cuties is a movie, which means the scenes with the young girls in sexually compromised positions, that actually happened. They really did that. The filmmakers really had young children act that way and they filmed it. So you can absolutely object to filming 11-year-olds twerking without watching 11-year-olds twerk. The same way you could object to someone drowning puppies without watching them do it. A book is different. Nobody is hurt in the making of a book. It's entirely fiction. It's just words. So you can object to certain acts being committed against children without seeing the acts. But it doesn't make sense to object to words being written without first understanding the context of those words. Hopefully the distinction there is clear and I don't, I don't need to dwell on it anymore. Um, now, other media outlets have jumped on the pile. The Daily Telegraph, for example, reported that Rowling's book is about a transvestite killer. And the moral of the story is never trust a man in a dress. And I think this is from someone who also didn't read it, but they're telling you what the moral of the story is. Now, personally, I think that's a fine moral and good advice. And in fact, if you call that statement, never trust a man in a dress, transphobic, then you're saying that the person in the dress is a man. So wouldn't you be the transphobic one then by your logic? Um, in any case, it turns out that this is all being blown out of proportion, unsurprisingly. Madeline Kearns has a piece about this in the National Review. Uh, this is what she says. <clears throat> According to Nick Cohen, who reviewed Troubled Blood, that's the name of the book, after actually reading the book, transvestitism barely features in the plot um, when it, uh, and when it does, nothing is made of the fact that the killer wears a wig and a women's, woman's coat, not a dress. 
as a disguise when approaching one of his victims. Cohen describes the work, which is the fifth installment in Rowling's uh, Cormoran Strike crime series, as a 900-page novel that is Dickensian in its scope and gallery of characters. It tells the tale of Strike and his business partner, Robin Ellicott, who are hired by a middle-aged woman to investigate the disappearance of her mother in the 1970s. A mother, a character called Dennis Creed is investigated because he was thought guilty at the time, but a good dozen other suspects are also investigated. He concludes, you have to search hard to find a justification for the belief that the book's moral seems to be never trust a man in a dress. So it's all bogus. And in fact, there's nothing new or strange about a story like this featuring a dude dressing in women's clothes to kill someone. Psycho, uh, Alfred Hitchcock has similar themes. Silence, Silence of the Lambs has uh, themes in, the, in that ballpark as well. Of course, I wouldn't expect these book burners to know that because they've only read one book in their lives, Harry Potter, and even their knowledge of film goes back no further than about 2006. All of this, and when I look at the modern left in general, it brings to mind a a quote from C.S. Lewis in his memoir, Surprised by Joy. And he said, a young man who wishes to remain a sound atheist cannot be too careful of his reading. There are traps everywhere. That's the quote. And what he meant is that for him, Atheism seems to be a tenuous and fragile worldview, which can be easily blown apart and so must be preserved and protected by, among other things, being very selective in what you choose to expose yourself to. I think this applies even more so to modern leftism, though atheism and modern leftism, of course, are not unrelated. But this is why we're seeing, you know, book burning popping up again, because knowledge, information, diversity of thought, differing viewpoints, these are a mortal threat to a worldview that cannot withstand the pressure cannot stand up against the scrutiny. All it can do is shout you down, shut you up, burn your book, cancel you, burn a building, throw a rock at you. So very often it has physical responses to intellectual challenges, and that's because its intellectual arsenal is empty. And you definitely know that's the case for you if you find yourself burning a book. Hope you enjoyed this segment of The Matt Wall Show because you should know on September 28th, it will be moving from the Daily Wire channel to be exclusively available on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Matt Walsh. You can get the link in the description below. I'm also making a lot of new content that you can only find on my channel. So subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you never miss out on a new video.